These days, music is everywhere, in stores, on the subway, on Netflix. It's hard to find a public space where there's no music in the background. But music as an art form is different. When we step into an elevator and hear music, the beginning and ending points are arbitrary. In a video game, although music certainly contributes to the overall character, the moments it starts or stops any given loop are determined by the player's actions, not by anything inherent in the music itself. What all these kinds of music have in common is that the music is not the main focus of our attention. But in serious, so-called concert music, the goal is just the opposite. The music is meant to be the center of the listener's attention. Our goal is to create a special, enclosed period of time for the listener that stands out as separate from the surrounding environment. In other words, an important characteristic of this kind of music is framing. By framing, I mean the music has a distinct, intentional beginning and end. And they are organic parts of the music structure, rather than being dictated by external requirements. In these situations, the listener will normally be silent before the music starts, and will want to hear the piece from start to finish, non-stop. This is a traditional view of art, but it's hard to refute without losing exactly what most of us love about music. It lets us enter into another world, apart from our everyday environment, in order to make an imaginary emotional voyage. Now, for the composer, such framing beginnings and endings impose some very specific requirements. A beginning needs to create interest and curiosity. So, for example, a long diminuendo on a consonant chord is not a very good beginning, so it doesn't create any suspense, nor does it leave the listener with any desire to go on. Here's an example. The problem with this is, it sounds like an ending. On the other hand, if the diminuendo were somewhat interrupted, or the harmony were unstable, it could become more convincing, as long as the composer eventually follows up on the question implied by the opening gesture. Compare this version. The chord in the third bar contradicts the A major chord before it, and it leaves us wondering what will come next. After this, for example, we could repeat the opening diminuendo in the interrupting chord and lead it somewhere else the second time, or the harmony could resolve in some other unexpected way and eventually get richer. There are many kinds of beginnings, but all of them have in common the creation of some kind of tension or suspense. As we discussed in an earlier lesson, much of music interest comes from patterns, which lead to expectations, which the composer can then play with. A beginning that creates no further expectations will not leave the listener wanting to go on with the piece. An ending also imposes certain requirements. If the listener is to find the ending convincing, it must resolve any remaining tension, leaving no expectations unfulfilled. Unless, of course, it's part of a larger work, in which case the ending might provide what I call yes but. So, our second example above would certainly not be a convincing ending. Let's listen to it again. The problem here is exactly what makes it a good beginning. We expect some kind of follow-up due to the surprising interruption. Final endings are almost always extreme, like the softest or the loudest moment in the piece. The long, fade-out endings heard in so much pop music are typical. On the other hand, a climax can also be an ending. If so, it should be the biggest climax in the piece. Nobody wants a tepid ending. Note the importance of dynamics in beginnings and endings. Dynamics are such a salient dimension in music, too often ignored in analysis. Of course, dynamics alone don't tell the whole story, but it's safe to say that a mezzo forte ending is not likely to be entirely convincing. Very often, endings will also include the highest or lowest pitches, or both. This, again, serves to confirm the feeling that we have gone as far as we can, reaching some kind of limit. One of the very rare works that ends in the middle register, just stopping, is Berg's Wozzeck. But here it's justified by the story. The child is rocking, not knowing that both his parents are dead. So the work breaks off, leaving the audience to imagine what the child will soon discover. Without this narrative situation, the ending of Wozzeck would sound very strange indeed. Note that this is a situation where there are formal requirements that go beyond the music itself, namely the narrative. But most of the time, even in music with text, it's the music that dominates. In fact, it's far from easy to understand text when it's sung instead of being spoken, even when it's perfectly set to music. 
For many years, I enjoyed Lieder and songs by various composers in languages I didn't know. When I finally did pay attention to the text, the experience was always richer, but the music was still in the foreground no matter how much it reflected the form of the text. Coming back to endings, if the work is of any length, the composer will often prepare the ending by creating rising expectations, leading to some kind of buildup of tension that the ending eventually resolves. Beethoven's codas and some of his larger sonata forms are typical. They usually contain a big buildup, after which the final chords provide resolution. Within the frame created by the beginning and the ending, there are many other formal requirements for artistic music. For example, a certain economy of material, some kind of progression in emotional intensity, and often, in longer pieces, some kind of rounding off, bringing back familiar material. I'll have more to say about these requirements in future lessons. Precisely because it's an enclosed, framed experience, Music, like the other art, can provide something that is not possible in our everyday lives. Perfection. Since we don't have much control over how and when our lives begin and end, a life can't be perfect. Even the luckiest people are still subject to chance events that can totally change their lives. The challenge is to make the best of what reality throws our way. But in a work of art, because the experience is contained in a frame that's completely intentional and controlled, the artist can revise and refine to attain a harmonious whole. Note that the book... Musical Form and Musical Performance by Edward Cohn has some interesting things to say about framing and its relationship to performance.